how do you discipline your mind not to get like super speculative and like like oh my god reality we only understand it like we're in this tiny moment of time if there is such a thing of time mm. in this thing called space if there is such a thing as space and even if these things are there they're they're taking place within this vast five percent mm. of an even vaster 100 percent 95 percent of which is only speculatively observable due to abstract patterning yeah. doesn't that leave in how does that affect you personally with your uh, uh, personally philosophically i would mean i mean i suppose in your attitude towards religion mm. and uh, the way that we organize societies just two small <laughs> yeah. questions yeah. there yeah um i mean i i guess the main thing is that uh, you know you asked how i how i discipline my mind to not just sort of fly off into into speculative territory i think that i think you do have to speculate a bit when you're in my field and that's that's how you end up coming up with new ideas um but i think i think at the heart i'm a very empirical kind of person uh, i like i like things i can i can understand with mathematics and have data to support, right? I like evidence. And so I find so I find the, the concept of faith very difficult, for example, because faith is all about not having empirical evidence, right? It's about it's about experiences maybe or 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 some kind of um, some kind of speculation or or some kind of understanding that's that's more abstract, but but not hard data. Right. And I'm I'm somebody who I I appreciate hard data. And I, I, I like to, to say, okay, this is what we know. These are the concrete things. Here's what we can extrapolate from that. But I find, I find faith very difficult because the idea of faith is you're supposed to not have evidence, right? You're supposed to believe. And I've never figured out how to do that, how to believe without evidence. No, I, I get very caught between those two attitudes myself. I suppose it is somewhat an acceptance of that 95% mm. that you've just described that may be on the remit not only of our sensory instruments but our very ability to conceptualize and only symbolically understood the way that mathematics is ultimately a cohesive language of symbols mm. and represent like that a cohesive and inter deeply interrelated set of symbols i mean like Man, it takes me, Katie, to the point of where I feel like, um, you know, like I've ha had this conversation with scientists before, because, and I suppose this must be the magnetism of my own um, appetite for narrative, but I always feel like it, it takes me to some kind of Vedic inner space where mm. I think about devouring gods and goddesses and elemental forces that are interwoven mm -hmm. as just uh, like, you know as just well you will never going to understand this stuff it's beyond you but it's a bit like as if there was a dragon mm. that was really really hot yeah, or yeah, yeah. there was this multiple headed thing that's existing in and out of various planes of reality I feel like human I saw on some level you know when you said like the moment you talked about uh, ago you talked about sort of intuition like and the relationship between intuition and faith and and I, I, I too am sort of reluctant to like open the door to the deluge of woo woo, mm -hmm. but like I feel that it's at some point like what what is the element we are dealing with experientially? What is this conscious experience that you and I and all of us presumably are having? Mm -hmm. you know, what is that fundamentally? Where does that? It, um, where is that webbed into right. this this unknowable morass that you are mathematically examining? Well, I mean, I think you know what you said about about narrative, about stories. I think that's that is the 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 fundamental aspect of human nature. Like we we want narrative, we want a story, we want we need something to conceptualize all of the things that are happening, right? Like our our experiences and and you know, different uh, people over time, different cultures have had different narratives that that have been used in, uh, to to understand the the world around them. And, and when those are useful, um, they, you know, they persist. Right. So um, you can you can find patterns in the sky and and assign to those patterns of, of in the stars, um, you know, stories around 
uh, you know, uh, goddesses or whatever. But if you if you if you can then say, okay, well, when this constellation is rising, that's when we plant our crops because of some story. But then it actually it works to you know that's when you should plant plant your crops for for other reasons as well. And then you know you get into the science of it. Um, then it's useful. And for for me, you know, the stories that that work for me are, are mathematical ones, right? So I uh, we we as physicists create narratives create stories that are that are mathematical constructs and then when those work when we can apply those and and get a, a useful a useful uh, result out of that then we then we keep using those those stories but but it's not you know i don't think we're we're really ever it's not that we have fundamental truth necessarily right like i don't I know a lot of physicists talk about like a theory of everything and getting seeing the mind of God or like you know the fundamental reality. I th I think that I think that's a hard that's a big ask. I think that what we're really doing is we're building tools, we're telling stories, mathematical stories, and then we're f trying to find some that are useful that that work to you know meet, match the data. But it's it doesn't mean that we necessarily have fundamental reality, and and I don't. I don't think that uh, I'm. I don't have the confidence to say, you know, that we are we are finding fundamental reality. I, I think we are finding useful tools, and other people might have other tools that are more useful for them for for conceptualizing their lives. As long as you know, as long as a tool is useful to you and not hurting anybody, then you know you use what resonates, right?